I wanted to talk a minute about using tables for your robotics activity. Our first cardinal rule is thou shalt not run your robot on a table without edges. So you either need to be running your robot on a table that's got some edges to prevent it from falling to the floor or running the robots on the floor. This, of course, doesn't apply to robots that don't move, but since most kids like to build robots that move, they have wheels, they have treads, then you need some place to run them. It's easy enough to run them on the floor when you're a lot shorter and a lot younger. As we get older, it's nice to be able to use a table. It's also a little easier just to work on a higher level than it is to be down on the floor all the time. It's also impossible to walk across this, whereas if you put something on the floor, kids running around the classroom or even in an after-school activity will tend to bump them. So that's one of the reasons why we build tables. We have two kinds of tables that we use. This is a 4x4 four four table. We also have 4x8 tables. Depending on what you need will depend on what you build or, or purchase in your local area. I'm going to talk about a 4x4 four four table, but if you want a 4x8, simply make it longer. There's a couple of things that, that you want to look for as you go about getting your table, and there are some building directions online, but it's really does it, it's too simple to really need building directions. What we have here is a 4x8, uh, sorry, a 4x4 four four sheet of Luan. Luan is a type of plywood. It's a very lightweight, quarter-inch thick piece of plywood available at almost all lumber yards or the big box lumber stores. So we have a 4x4 four four sheet of Luan. There are other options for this base part. If you didn't want to use the Luan, which tends to be a little bit rough, and we had to be careful when we sanded the edges because it does tend to be a little on the splintery side. But it's cheap, it's lightweight, and it gives you one fairly clean surface. I did run the sander over that before we painted it as well. If I don't want to use that, then I'll move up to a regular plywood, either a half inch, five eighths, or we even have some that are three quarters of an inch thick. And what you want to aim for then is either a BC grade plywood or an AC or an AB grade plywood. Plywood comes in basically three grades. C is the lowest, roughest surface. It'll have holes, it'll have knots in it, and it'll be in just general shape rough. And that's not what you want to be running your robots over. A B grade plywood, and if you buy a, grade, a piece of BC plywood, it means one side is rough and one side is more finished. It will be smooth and it usually is sanded. So you would use the smooth side up and the rough side on the bottom. And then you can go all the way up to A grade plywood, which is what most people use for cabinets. It's absolutely clear. The top layer of the plywood is finished and ready to go up on cabinets or whatever else you would want to build with it. So you can do that. Most of the BC or B grades and the A grade plywoods are only available in half inch, five eighths, or three quarters if you're shopping locally. Most of it could be ordered, special order, but most don't want to go to that trouble. So imagine you've got yourself a five eighths or a half inch sheet of the good plywood. That's fine. You use it just like you would use this. Another possibility for the base here would be a 4x4 four four or a 4x8 four sheet of melamine. Melamine is a countertop surface. Some people use it for cabinets as well. It's particle board with a white finished almost laminate on, on top. And it's very easy to clean and it's very smooth. So if this were a, that a melamine surface, all we'd have to do if there were marks on it, put some spray cleaner on, scrub it off, wipe it off, and it's clean again. Very nice. Put down a piece of tape, it peels right back up again. The only problem is melamine is probably the heaviest of all the options that we're talking about. This table that we're talking and, and looking at today weighs 18 pounds. So a 4x4 four four table with the thinnest bottom and thin sides, 18 pounds. If we had made this out of melamine, uh, I know we have some out in the barn that are 3 quarter inch melamine left over from another project with 2x4 frames on the side and it weighs at least 40 pounds. So there's a big difference between 18 pounds and 40 pounds uh, when it's time to start moving things around. And if this was a 4x8 table made of melamine or even 3 quarter inch plywood, then the entire table is going to be between 60 and 80 pounds. So it's no longer something easy to move. You wouldn't want to do that every day after school. Plus you'd have to worry about it falling over and and uh, uh, causing some damage either to people or to the building. So we've got a quarter inch piece of melamine. On the edges, you've got several different options. 
probably the easiest thing to do would be to just put a 2x4 edge on it. You cut the 2x4s to meet. Usually if this was a, if it's a 4x4, I'm going to cut two 4 foot, one on each side, and then the ends would be 45 inches together. You'd screw them all together and then come up from the bottom into the 2x4s to screw it to the tabletop. Uh, what I have on here, because I wanted something a little bit thinner than 2x4s, but I wanted something thicker than a 1x4, is I went to our local lumber yard where they had 5 quarter inch thickness. So it's actually just a hair thicker than 1 inch, because a 2x4 is not really 2 inches by 4 inches, that's before they plane it. Same thing here, this was an inch and a quarter thick before they planed it. Uh, if you buy 1 inch lumber, after they plane it, it's three quarters inch thick. See, you're getting a lumber lesson at the same time. I wanted something a little thicker than uh, uh, three quarters of an inch, so that's what I used. Could easily have done it with uh, one inch lumber as well. So we just cut it to shape, screw it together, and that's done. To finish this, I just painted it with a, a satin enamel, but you could paint it with a gloss as well. The, the glossier it is, the easier it is to clean. Uh, it's also a, a different reflective issue. Uh, we'll be using this to do some video work with the robots and we didn't want something quite as, as shiny as a high gloss, so we went with a, a satin finish. There's nothing wrong with gloss. It will reflect differently when you're using the light meters, so you just have to, you have to practice like you do with anything else until you get your light sensors working for your particular table. We've talked about the weight. You want to keep it light if you need to move it around. If it's a 4x8 table and you're going to be placing it out on, on other tables and you want a really good surface, something a little bit thicker than a quarter of an inch might be best. I'll leave it up to you. This would work fine, though, even as an 8-foot long table. Uh, if you went to buy the Luan, you're talking probably about $12 to $14 for a 4x8 sheet of Luan plywood. So that's enough for two of these or one long table. And then the edge work, you're probably going to be all done for about $25. If you purchased a sheet of melamine, I think it's closer to $20 for the base. Might be $25 now. If you went with finished grade plywood, you could be looking at just for the base piece as much as $40 or $50 for a 4x8 sheet. You can buy that in smaller sheets. Uh, and just buy a 4x4. Four four. I've seen tables made 4x4, four 4x6, four, four 3x6, four 4x8. Four you figure out what's going to fit in your place, buy a sheet of plywood that's big enough for that, and then work from there. A couple of quick notes about building a robot table. The material you're going to need for a 4x4 four four foot table would include some plywood for the base, whether it's Luan, a higher grade B or C grade plywood, or even a high grade A grade plywood, or melamine. They all have different uses. If you want to look at these, pause the, pause the video and, and look through the notes. In terms of weight and cost, the Luan is certainly the least expensive and the lightest weight, so you're only looking at about 13 pounds for that part of it, all the way up to melamine, which can be as much as 50 pounds. And actually weighs closer to 30, well it's 20 to 30 dollars for a sheet. For the sides, the 2x4s are probably the easiest thing to use. You simply pick up uh, two of those for a short table, three for a long table, and cut them to length and then screw them on using the appropriate size screws. In terms of the layout, looking from the top for a 4x4 you're going to have two four foot long pieces and then if they're two by fours these cross pieces would be 48 inches minus the thickness that you'd get for the two by fours which leaves you 45 inches. I've got the information here for other sizes of lumber. And lastly looking at it with the piece of plywood on the bottom the frame at the top you have to come through from the bottom on all four sides and put in screws to hold all the pieces together.